Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. It's Miss Bauer again, and today we're gonna to talk about congruent figures. We're mainly gonna talk about congruent triangles, but we might have a few other shapes in there, which is why we say congruent figures. Now, congruent triangles or congruent figures are exactly the same size and the same shape. So the same size and they're the same shape. They're congruent, they're identical. So for example, if I were going to draw a triangle, um, let's do ABC. So I'm going to call this triangle ABC. I'm going to change this a little bit. So there's triangle ABC, and let's just say that I copy and paste it. Well, are those congruent? And you would tell me, yes, they're congruent because I literally copied and pasted it. And what if I change the color? Well, they're still congruent. They're still identical, right? And so uh, what if I did this? Still congruent? What if I did that? No, because I made it a little bit bigger. So back to it, just making sure that they're congruent. It doesn't matter if I turned it around still congruent. Now, the corresponding parts are what happens if I do this. So instead of triangle ABC and triangle ABC, I'm going to do triangle ABC and I'm going to change these letters to be X, Y, and Z. Now, the corresponding parts are the parts that match up or go together. Now, remember that I turned this picture around a little bit, but if I asked you what part corresponds with X, you would tell me A. What part corresponds with B, Y, and what matches with C, Z. It doesn't matter that I turned it around a little bit. Corresponding parts are just the same spot parts. And I'm going to say that in quotations marks because they might not be in the exact same spot but there are matching parts. So for example, that was A and X were corresponding, so they're congruent. That means angle B and angle Y should be congruent because these triangles are congruent and C corresponds to Z. Very similar to corresponding angles if you remember that from last unit. So what's different about this and what we did yesterday is now it's not just one part in a triangle congruent to another part in a triangle. It's not like this side congruent to that side. It's a whole triangle matching a whole triangle. So if I take a look at these two triangles, I know that they're congruent because I see ticks. So those sides are congruent. I see ticks here. So those sides are congruent. I see markings all in the picture to tell me they're congruent. So it says write a congruent statement for the triangles and then identify all the pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Now, the congruent statement is what matches or what maps one triangle to the other. The congruent statement is saying that triangle something is congruent to triangle something. And there's a key thing that you have to remember here, and I want you to write it down up at the top really, really big, and that's that the order is important. I'm going to say that again. The order is important. Just like in life, if somebody cuts you in front of the line, that's super frustrating because the order is important. You wouldn't go and like wait. When I was in New York, there were these people that were lined up down the street for a launch of some sneakers. You would not go and just cut that line because that order is important. They only had a certain number of pairs. People were lining up for a very, very long, long line because they wanted to get their hands on these shoes. That order is important and that order is important here with these triangles. Here's what I mean when I say that. If I want to write for my congruent statement, I want to say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. Well, the order has to be important. What has to go with A? F, because that's the part that matches with it. What has to go with B? G, because that's the part that's congruent. And what has to go with C? H, because those are our corresponding parts. That order is important. And let's say that I didn't want to ch say triangle ABC. Let's say that I wanted to change it up and say triangle BCA. Well, it's the same thing again. B has to go with G. So now G would go first. 
And C has to go with H, so now that would be in the middle. And A has to go with F, so now those would go last. That order is important because once you have this congruent statement, that helps you identify all of your parts. Because if I asked you what side goes with A, B, it wouldn't be G, F. What side goes with A, B, it would be F, G. Now I can look at my picture and see that two ticks, two ticks, but what's a lot easier is to look at this statement. So what goes with A, B, F, G. So I'm gonna identify all my corresponding parts. That's all my sides and all my angles. That's the next part of this problem. So I'm gonna say that A, B is congruent to F, G. Okay, and then I'm matching. So B, C has to go with G, H. And what if I wanted to say C, B? Be careful there, think about it. What would CB go with? CB would have to go with HG. So CB would have to go with HG. And then we're missing one more side. I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. AC, hopefully you got that, or CA, but I'm gonna do AC because AC has to go with FH. If I said CA, then CA would go with H. F. Got to be really careful with that order. Okay, now I did all my corresponding sides. Now I'm just going to do my corresponding angles. So angle A corresponds or is congruent to, and angles are a lot easier. Angle A would go with angle F. If I asked you what goes with angle G, you would tell me angle G goes with angle B. And what goes with angle C? Angle H. Those are all of our pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So let's take a look at this next picture. And I want you to look at this, look hard, and I want you to figure out, are the triangles congruent? It's gonna be a yes or a no question. Okay, so let's take a look. One tick is between three arcs and two arcs. So one tick should be between three arcs and two arcs, but it's not. If you notice that one tick goes between two arcs and three arcs, but over here that one tick goes between three arcs and one arc, which means that our triangles actually are not congruent. And if they're not congruent, you can't write a congruent statement because the congruent corresponding parts don't exist because the corresponding parts aren't congruent. And that's what we're gonna say, is we're gonna say no, we can't write a congruent statement. No, they're not congruent because the corresponding parts were not congruent. No, because the corresponding parts are not congruent. And that's kind of like that biconditional again. If all your parts are congruent to each other and they all kind of match up in the right order, yeah, your triangles are congruent. But these weren't. That one tick side was between different angles, which means that the corresponding parts didn't line up. Therefore, it's not congruent. So I'm going to give you another one to look at. The last one was no. Take a closer look at this one and see if you think yes or no. And we actually have something on here that's not marked, but that we can mark it. Anybody remember what type of angles make the X? Hopefully you remember, maybe, maybe not. But remember, vertical angles are congruent. So I had one arc, two arcs. Now I'm going to go to three arcs and three arcs. Because I'm just matching up one with one, two with two, three with three. And I can mark that because vertical angles are always congruent. So I'm going to call that my vertical angles freebie. because vertical angles are always congruent. So I can add that there, that's allowed. I can put that there because I know vertical angles are always congruent. So now I'm gonna check. So one tick is between one arc and two arcs. Well, one tick is between one arc and two arcs, it works. Um, three ticks is between two and three. Three ticks is between two and three. So these are congruent, they just did something to the picture. Maybe you got it, but if Angle D is top left and now it's down there. It just means they flipped it. That's allowed. Remember back up here when we turned our triangle around? You can rotate it. 
So I'm going to say yes. Well, how do we know? Because the corresponding parts are congruent. And it's like those conditional statements again. If you remember, like, yes, they're congruent because corresponding parts are congruent. No, because the corresponding parts are not congruent. There's our inverse. This is our OG. So we see those conditional statements are still popping up. Okay, now I need to write a congruence statement. And remember that your order is important. So if I said triangle DEG, I'm going to give you a minute to think, what would triangle DEG be congruent to? If you said HEF, you're right. But what if I change it up? What if I said triangle EGD? Give you a minute to think about that. Well, EGD, so three arcs, two arcs, one arc would go with EF. H, three arcs, one arcs, two arcs, one arc, I mean. So remembering that that order is important. Both of these answers are correct, but you just have to be careful that you're matching up the order and everything is lining up. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Are these triangles congruent? I'm going to ask you this question. Do you see any ticks? I don't see any ticks, which means no, they're not congruent. And it has nothing to do with corresponding parts. It's simply because I don't have enough information to determine if they are congruent or not. I don't know anything about the sides. The sides could be congruent, they could not, but unless they give me ticks, I can't determine yes or no. I can't determine yes unless they give me ticks, so then it has to be no. So no, there's not enough information. But what I am gonna ask you is if there's one arc here, two arcs there, one arc, two arcs, what about angle C and angle F? Would it just those, would those angles be congruent to each other? Okay, if you're not sure, let's put in some numbers. Remember arcs mean congruent. So um, let's do that this is 50 degrees, this is 50 degrees, and then let's make this, um, 60 degrees and then we'll make that 60 degrees right those have to be congruent so then would these parts be congruent well triangles add up to 180 don't they so 50 and 60 would be 110 180 minus 110 is 70 which means that c is 70 and so is f so while we didn't have an arc there we can actually put an arc there and that's called two angles theorem That's called two angles theorem. Now, two angles theorem has a long math definition, but basically it's saying that if two angles are congruent, then the third's gonna be congruent as well. So if two angles are congruent, then the third is congruent as well. And that's just because triangles add up to 180. So if two angles are congruent, well, then the third one has to be congruent as well. So let's take a look at actually solving with some of these. So they give me, here's that congruent figures. These aren't triangles. They give me this picture and they tell you that QRST is congruent to WXYZ, which means that QR should go with WX. So QR should go with WX. Now, and when I start looking at this picture, I'm seeing an X, I'm seeing a Y. I notice that this has Y minus X, which means I can't solve for a Y until I figure out what X is first. So let's look. I have 5x plus 5 on angle W, and it has to match with one of these other parts. So let's go back and look at our order. W goes with Q, and Q is 65. So there's your part equals part. Unlike the other day when it was a triangle inside of its own triangle, and it was like an angle and an angle, now it's just matching between two different pictures instead of one. So I'm going to set this up and I'm going to say that 5x plus 5 equals 65. And to solve, subtract 5. So 5x equals 60. 
divide by 5 and that would make x 12. Well, now that I know what x is, I'm going to plug it in. So x is 12, so y minus not x anymore, but I'm going to say y minus 12. And we already established that qr goes with wx. So if qr is 6 and wx is y minus x, but we said it's 12, now I'm going to set this one up and say that y minus 12 equals 6. Remember that congruent just means part equals part. So most of these problems are going to be part equals part. So that would mean that y would equal... 18. That's it. Okay, now if I take a look at this next one, these triangles are congruent. They didn't put the ticks on there to show you, but I could say that that side's congruent to that side. That's like another reflexive property freebie. They share a side. Me equals me. Um, so if these triangles are congruent, I have that reflexive property in there. Now I'm just going to start matching things together. Well, 2y plus 2 goes with this piece, but there's nothing there, so that's not very helpful. Um, I know that one arc is 120, and that's 120. I know that three arcs is 20, and that should be three arcs should be 20. And maybe now you see it. So I know that's a triangle, that's 120, that's 20. Remember that triangles add up to 180. So to set this one up, I could do instead of part equals part, because I don't have the, what this piece equals to, I could just add these all together and set it equal to 180. So I would do 2y plus 2 plus 120 plus 20 equals 180. So 2y plus 142 equals 180. I can solve. Or what some people like to do is they still like to do part equals part. Because this is, if this is 120 and this is 20, think, a triangle adds up to 180, right? So 120 plus 20 would be 140. Well, what's 180 minus 140? 40. So that last missing angle should equal 40 for the triangle add up, to add up to 180. So 2y plus 2 equals 40. And then I have smaller numbers. It's a little bit easier to solve. So 2y would equal 38. Subtract 2, divide by 2. y would equal 19. Now you get the same answer either way that you solve it, but you have to remember that if they have the same number of arcs, they match up, and then you also had to use that triangles add up to 180 rule. Okay, taking a look at this one, remember if they're congruent, we can copy paste. I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can copy paste, figure out any information on your own here. Now, I'm going to tell you that y equals 70, so if you got that, awesome job. Let's backtrack and figure out how, though. Okay, so if this is 45, then that also has to be 45. If this is 65, that has to be 65, because I have arcs, they're congruent. Remember that a triangle adds up to 180, right? So what's 45 plus 65? 110, subtract that from 180, y is 70. That was it. Good job if you got that one. So let's take a look at this example. It tells you that the two triangles are congruent. It says given that they're congruent, find x and y. Now, first I'm going to see if anything was turned around. I know that a goes with d, so a goes with d. There, there's a part equals part right there, y'all. And I know that B goes with E, so B goes with E. Well, if E is 42, then B is 42. And then I know that C goes with F, last one's left. So if C is 3Y, then F is 3Y as well. Well, we just established part equals part. So 5X plus 2 equals 87. Subtract 2, so 5X would equal 85. X would equal 17. And I know I'm going pretty fast on the solving here. Remember, the solving's algebra. Geometry is how we set it up. So now I just need to figure out what is y. Well, remember what you know about a triangle. I'm going to give you a minute to see if you can set this one up. And if you said that 3y equals 51, you're right. Because 87 and 42 is 129, well, what's 180 minus 129? 51. 
Divide both sides by 3, y would equal 17 as well. So a lot of times it's going to be part equals part, but then remember sometimes we have to use that rule when triangles add up to 180. So now we have a really crazy picture with a lots of x and y's and z's and all of that. Okay, I'm going to start mapping what goes to each other. And I'm going to use colors. So I'm going to go from x to y to z. Okay, so 2x plus 9 is on angle B. Well, what goes with angle B? Angle R, which is 49. So there's one part equals part. So 2x plus 9 equals 49. And subtract 9, divide by 2. You can solve these. Um, so after x, I'm going to try to figure out what y is. So 2y minus 31 is on angle D. And angle D goes with angle T, which is y plus 11. So 2y minus 31 would equal y plus 11. Now, I helped you out with the angles. I want you to take a minute and see if you could figure out how to set up for w and how to set up for z. Now, if you notice that w is between b and c, so it should go with rs. So if you said that 4w minus 7 equals 2w plus 13, you're correct. And then to figure out what z is, z plus 16, that's between u and t. So ut goes with ed, which is 3z plus 10, and that's how we set those up. 3z plus 10 equals z plus 16. Now we're going to skip solving all of these. Hopefully you're getting really good at that solving for x, that algebra skill. But just to remember... Order is important. The order tells you what part goes with what part. And once again, a lot of these problems are part equals part, with the exception of a few problems like this one and this one, where we had to use that 180 rule. So if you can't do part equals part, ask yourself what pieces add up to 180. And remember that the order is always important. Good luck with your practice. I'll see you next time.